Welcome back to Medinair. In this video, let's discuss about fibrous dysplasia. Fibrous dysplasia is a type of fibrosis lesion where normal bone is replaced by fibrous tissue containing newly formed mineralized product. Fibrous dysplasia is a non-hereditary developmental tumor-like lesion where replacement of normal bone by proliferation of cellular fibrous connective tissue with irregular bony trabeculae occurs. Maturation of bone is arrested here at the woven bone stage. Let's have a look at the etiology of this anomaly. It occurs due to postzygotic activating somatic mutation of GNAS1 gene, which is located at the chromosome number 20Q13.2. GNAS refers to guanine nucleotide binding protein, a stimulating activity polypeptide. This gene encodes for G protein. So this is what exactly happens. GNAS1 gene mutation occurs which activates G protein. G protein is basically involved in cyclic AMP production. Since G protein is activated, there is increased production of cyclic AMP. This in turn causes dysfunction of melanocyte, endocrine function and osteoblast. As a result, we have increased melanocyte production hyperfunction of endocrine system and affects differentiation of osteoblast. We will be correlating all these with the clinical features now. Fibrous dysplasia exists in two forms such as polyostotic and monostotic. Let's get to know about the each type in detail. Polyostotic fibrous dysplasia affects multiple bones like femur, tibia, pelvis, ribs, skull, facial bones, etc. It mostly affects 3 to 15 years old group. No gender and racial predilection is reported and is known to affect unilaterally more than bilaterally. The skeletal manifestations of this polyostotic type are bone pain and spontaneous fracture, bowing or bending of long bones with length discrepancies of leg occur. One of the most notable skeletal manifestations is shepherd crook deformity where curvature of femoral neck and proximal shaft is seen. Extraskeletally, we could be able to appreciate cafe olate pigmentation which means coffee with milk kind of pigmentation. It appears on the same side as that of the lesion and also skin over the midline. Also, Endocrine dysfunction arises which is primarily manifested as precocious puberty and some other endocrine disturbances may include hyperthyroidism, adrenal disorders, hyperpituitarism, hypercalcemia, diabetes. If a triad of polyostotic fibrous dysplasia, endocrine abnormalities and caffeolate pigmentation is present, it is termed as McCune-Albright syndrome. When Polyostotic fibrous dysplasia is associated only with caffeolate pigmentation. It is termed as jaff lichtenstein syndrome. Rarely, patient may also have multiple intramuscular myxomas along with polyostotic fibrous dysplasia. It is termed as Mazabrot syndrome. Another type of fibrous dysplasia is monostotic fibrous dysplasia. It involves only one type of bone, which may be craniofacial bones, ribs, femur, tibia and mostly affects young adults. Slight female predilection may be noted. The patient presents with leonine appearance also known as leontiasis ossea if maxilla and associated bones are affected. Exclusively we got some oral manifestations such as painless swelling or bulging of jaw with protuberant excrescence of inferior border of the mandible. Also, oligodontia, torodontism, enamel hypoplasia, and malalignment of teeth may be noted. Radiographically, it appears radiolucent with loss of trabacular pattern and scalloping of endosteal portion of bone is noted. Due to replacement of medullary bone by fibrous tissue occurs, it gets groundless appearance or orange peel appearance. Then sign is noted because of the radiolucent lesion with thick sclerotic border. In intraoral periapical radiograph, fingerprint appearance is seen. Histological feature of this anomaly is Chinese letter pattern or alphabet soup pattern. The lesion shows numerous irregular C-shaped trabeculae of oven bone 
not connected to each other like in the background of low to moderate cellular fibrous connective tissue also osteoblastic crimping of bony trabecula is absent lab investigations reveal increased alkaline phosphatase level in polyosteotic type whereas it remains normal in monoosteotic type certain differential diagnosis of fibrous dysplasia based on radiographic and histological features are non ossifying fibroma aneurysmal bone cyst ameloblastoma giant cell tumor fibrous dysplasia is a self limiting condition there is no specific treatment to it but we must make sure that patient is not being subjected to radiation therapy as it increases the risk of osteosarcoma regarding the bone lesions osseous recontouring procedures are performed and that brings us to the end of the video i hope you guys found it helpful do like this video and subscribe to medinef for more thanks for watching